Our next speaker is Margaret Prescott. She is the, the originator and host and producer of Sojourner Truth, a nationally syndicated public affairs program on Pacifica Radio, and the author of Black Women, Bringing It All Back Home, Margaret Prescott. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor being introduced by my friend and fellow struggler, Mr. Danny Glover, and to follow the great Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Reverend Regas, of course, the great Julian Bond. I'd like to thank Tom Hayden and all of the organizers. It's a very emotional moment for those of us not on the East Coast to be here at the King Memorial. We lost him much too soon. He was much too young to be taken from us. I come here making the connection with the interrelationship between war and poverty because there was a hidden anti-war movement going on in black and brown communities that was not recognized by what in Pacifica we call the mainstream media as part of the anti-war movement, but we were integral to that anti-war movement. And I want to lift up the name of Gloria House who drafted the SNCC, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee statement to end the war. To Julian Bond, who is on the stage with us and we heard his story. But if you have not seen the comic book that Julian Bond wrote when he was a young man, showing um, the interrelationship with poverty and war and all of the people in the black community and around the world against the war, you really have got to check it out. I hope that the website posts it. I also want to lift up the names of the black and brown mothers who are at the forefront of the welfare rights movement. Women like Johnny Tillman, like Bula Saunders, like Christine Morrison. It was welfare mothers who when Martin Luther King met with them to ask for their support to what he was doing, they turned around and they called him out for not knowing what they were doing and they gave him his marching orders. That was a pivotal moment for Dr. King. He went beyond only demanding jobs and demanded a guaranteed income. Our movements of today have to catch up with where Dr. King was when he was brutally shot down. We want a living wage for all. 51% of UN troops who died in Vietnam were black. Some of the veterans, black veterans, came back having been trained in war. They joined the militant black movement. Others got involved in the civil rights movement, including the providing defense for SNCC and other workers who put their lives at risk in the deep south and who are always constantly under attack. The welfare mothers stood against the wall also. They understood that money spent on war kept us poor. They said, we're not sending our children to fight no war. And Beulah Saunders stood up in the US Congress wearing her mink hat, and she said those words to members of Congress. They um, held anti-war and anti-poverty protests outside welfare offices. They did civil disobedience, but racism and economic divides guaranteed their invisibility invisibility. Also, when those of us at the bottom, when we gain strength, when we build a movement, we all gain from it. It was those mothers and the civil rights movement that the early women's rights movement that lent support to middle class white women, they got strength from those movements and we have to acknowledge that. Recently, a legislator from Maryland was heard discussing cuts to food stamps from the families whose children participated in the recent so-called riots in Maryland. Let us not forget that Martin Luther King said a riot is the voice of the unheard. It was the children of those of us who, with grief and rage and despair, rebelled in 120 cities when our great leader, Martin Luther King, was killed. And let us not forget that when King um, came out against the war, he took blows as Julian Bond outlined, not only from the mainstream media, but from some of his colleagues who have already become part of what was to become the civil rights industrial complex. And Dr. Martin Luther King, in his anti-war stance and his stance against poverty, distanced himself from that, and he paid the price with his
this life. Finally, Dr. King said that America has been backlashing on the question of basic constitutional and God he said widespread poverty conditions in schools and more have brought a great deal of despair, of desperation, and of bitterness. Today we feel and we witness that backlash from Ferguson to Staten Island to Baltimore to right here in Washington, D.C. The power against us is great, but we take heart from the anti-austerity movements happening across the pond in Greece and in Spain and now spreading to Italy and Ireland and Belgium from the movements for freedom from Palestine to the Congo, from the Black and Brown Lives Matter movements of young people who know that it is not a sprint, that they're not ready to be co-opted and used by those whose purpose is to divide our movements and to undermine our movements, but to know we're in it for the long haul. What can we do? Yesterday was May Day, and in New York City and other cities, people marched in solidarity with Baltimore and Ferguson, but also for the environment and for a living wage for all. This is part of the way we must go. The theme of the Grassroots Women's Network, of which I'm a part, is invest in caring, not killing. It is fiercely anti-war, and it has an economic demand. We're building on the legacy of both King and the Civil Rights Movement, campaigning for a living wage for all workers, and as women, we're extending that demand to include mothers and caregivers. That is an anti-war demand. The Pentagon has a 10-year plan. We got a 10-year plan, and we're taking it not only across this United States, but everywhere in the globe. We cannot repeat what happened in the 1960s. Our movements were too separate one from the other. We need and must have an, our autonomy, but that is not the same as separatism. We have to cut through the NGOization of our movements. We started out as a movement to change the world, not simply to have a career option and forget where we came from. We refuse to stay in our own lane, the broader the road, the better chance we all have of winning. And none of us should forget that the military is the world's greatest polluter, destroying our planet in order to make war and profit. We have got to recommit ourselves, and I thank those of you who have been out there on whose backs we stand today, to commit ourselves to doing the hard day-to-day -day work of bringing our movements together, not only across the United States, but to lend power to those who are suffering from a new colonialism, from imperialism, from the global south, to Haiti, to Cuba, to Venezuela, to the continent of Africa, to Asia. We have no choice but to come together. Our very lives and the lives of our planet is at risk. As Martin Luther King charged us, we can't get tired. We cannot rest. We must never give up until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Thank you. Ms. Prescott, we're going to have to cool the mic down a little bit. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't need the mic. <laughs>